Let's go out to Leslie in Arlington. What's up, Leslie? Hey, Dr. John. How are you? Good. It's been a heck of a show so far. How are you? I'm I'm, I'm good. I think I, I, I took that deep breath just as you did. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> man. So how can I help? What's up? Well, um, I am calling to get a little bit of advice from you on navigating the crazy world of youth sports. Um, recently, <laughs> oh, I had man. my first experience. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I basically had my eye was blown off my face whenever I had this experience and then started talking to all the different parents that are navigating this journey as I am. Um, recently, I had my eight year old try out for a baseball team. Nothing crazy, you know. Um, and he did well. He's, he's, he, he does well with sports. You know, we have him in all kinds of sports. Nothing, you know, nothing crazy. Just how, how old is he? Stuff. He's eight. Okay. He's a little eight-year-old boy. Okay. And um, so we ended up, tried out for this team. And I ended up getting this long email back from the coach. Um, and he was telling me how talented my son was and how, you know, he did really, really well. And then it started taking a different kind of turn. And as I'm reading through it, I'm like, wait a second. The coach is talking about um, how there's this challenge with uniforms and there's this travel team that he's part of and that they have decided at the end that because they wouldn't be able to get the uniforms back in time um, for the tournament that he had, you know, had tried out for to get this team to play in. Um, the, the coach said, well, we'll have to go with all of the travel team players that already have the uniforms. And I'm like, what, <laughs> what, what is this? Um, I read a couple of times. I'm like, wow. So, you know, we really are selecting, you know, you, you know, these young kids based off of uniforms, you know, versus talent. And it really, it just took me a few steps back. Like, wow, 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 wow. These are eight year olds. Um, mm -hmm. And I really kind of, I talked to a bunch of parents and I'm like, is this, is this normal? Is this like a one-off thing? Like, you know, did I just have a really bad experience? And I was blown away by the feedback because it seems like everybody that has children that are interested in sports are kind of navigating the same path where you either, you know, play in one type of rec league or you invest thousands of dollars into travel whatever travel team you want to put that kid in and it kind of locks them in for only playing that sport because the requirements are so intense mm -hmm. and I'm in the medical field. So I have a, a bit of a background on like, you know, development and everything like that. And I'm like, what are we doing to our kids? Like, why are we all standing by and, and not like waving our hands and saying enough is enough. This is insane. Yes. And so I made a decision, yes. you know, cause I'm like, okay, I feel crappy either way, whether I respond back to this coach or not. So I decided, you know what? I just, I feel like I need to say something. So I wrote back and just said, you know, I'm really challenged with understanding the philosophy behind your decision-making because they're eight-year-old kids, you know, just whoever's the best. Tell, tell me my kid isn't good enough. That's fine. That's a great lesson to teach him. You know, you got to work hard for the things that you want, you know, and what ended up happening, I wrote it, sent it. I got an even longer email back, really, you know, him discussing with me in depth how challenging this decision is about uniforms. I mean, it went on and on and on. And he was upset that I would question his ethics <laughs> with coaching. Leslie, and Leslie, Leslie, just, Leslie. Yeah. Do, do you want this man having influence over your child? Oh, absolutely not. No. Yeah. And that's yeah. the thing. It's just like, walk away. Yeah. I mean, it's walk away. Absolutely. Walk away. Totally. Well, but it, it kind of brought me up to the point of, you know, I'm one of many people that are out there that are in a situation where, our, our kids, you know, they're eight. We're going to be walking this path for quite some time. And I yeah. knew we, you know, everybody's going to at some point, of course. But at eight, it really took me back. Like, these are just little guys. And really looking at your advice on how to really more so communicate this to your kids. You know, you want to be mm -hmm. truthful, but you don't want to give them too much information. Yep. You know, whatever is appropriate. You know, and, and, you know, life's not fair. And that's a lesson to teach them for sure. But, um what are your thoughts on how we get through this? Um, I, I, in a, you know. Yeah, so I got, I got a lot of thoughts on this. Um, my thoughts were originally informed by, you know, you know, I worked at colleges forever and I would always, I was, a, I was an athlete and so I would always end up hanging out with the athletes, hanging out with um, not so much athletes as much as coaches were my friends and the trainers were my friends. And it started about a decade ago when my training friends, friends who were trainers, at college athletic trainers, 
were telling me that they were starting to see young people come through with joint use injuries seen in the elderly mm-hmm. from over-specialization and year-round sporting practices and a lack of unstructured play in multiple sports. And then mm-hmm. that just, so that was just a thing in my head. Like, what, what do you mean? It's like, oh, the kids don't play baseball and then they all play soccer and they all play basketball and then they get to middle school and they play football too and then they run track. No, at age six, they play baseball and then they get a hitting yeah. coach and a pitching coach and they make the select team and it plays in fall and then in spring and then there's a summer league and you're already specializing as a shortstop at age seven, right? Yeah. And so yeah. that was number one. That was the madness call number one. Like, what are we doing? Why? And then yeah. um, number two was the insane rise in childhood anxiety and depression. Mm-hmm. And then I started seeing the rise in adult anxiety and depression. And then as I dug into the literature on the kids, I realized the kids are simply responding to their environments and the environments are created by the adults. And then mm-hmm. I had my own son and he's a great athlete. He's a phenomenal athlete. And to him, he's just kind of a go with the flow guy. And he's really good. And it, I remember my first um, game that I went to the coach we had, the first coach was phenomenal. It was a magnificent human being, but I remember the first game and I remember thinking, I have to decide now if I'm going to get in a fist fight or not, because I'm not going to let that dad talk to those kids that way. On the, as a dad on the yeah. other team. And I knew if I go say something to that hothead, I'm going to end up in a physical altercation. And I was having to make that decision. And it was a field of six-year-olds or five-year-olds or whatever it was. And so you said it best. It's the parent's fault, full stop, that we've allowed this to get this way. It's abusive, and I use that word intentionally, and I had somebody email me and say, I I overuse that word. I don't. We're torturing our children by forcing them to live vicariously through our either achieved or failed athletic adventures. And somehow, parents have come to put our self-esteem, like there's some sort of checklist that if our kids makes good grades and they're good at sports, that that's somehow a performance scorecard for us as parents. Right. Mm -hmm. And so we've created this world. And so I go loop back to, to answer your question, I loop back to how do you tell your kids? You could, I I don't think it's developmentally appropriate. You could tell your kid, well, you just found out you may not get the job, not because you weren't the most talented, but because somebody knew somebody. That's just the way that works. Mm -hmm. Or because they had a nicer suit on in the interview. Um, that is how the world works, by the way. And that could very much happen. I don't know that an eight year old is going to get anything other than bitter and and anxious about that. So I don't know that I would tell them that. Mm -hmm. What I would say is this, I have preached to my kids since they were little, I've got one job on the planet and I can say it right now to both of them. What's my one job? And my kid, my son rolls his eyes and he's like to keep me safe. And my daughter won't even say it anymore. She just looks at the ground because she's like, (laughs) she's just annoyed by it. And that phrase, my job is to keep you safe, includes intellectually, psychologically, spiritually, and and physically. And so when my kids say, hey, why won't you give us a smartphone? We're nine and everyone else in the classroom has a smartphone at nine. I'll say, what's my one job to keep you safe? And when I tell my son, hey, we're not playing in this league, which I've done, we're not, I'm not going to do this league. Not because I don't want, want to drive you around, not because I can't afford it, it's, but it's because I don't want you thinking that the end result here is in any way uh, shaping you in a positive direction because it's not. Mm-hmm. I do think playing sports is really important. And one of the rules is when our kids have to do a thing. They have to play something, whether it's jujitsu, whether it's soccer, whether it's, it's rec baseball, whether it, my son's in the cross, he's a track and cross-country guru. Uh, he's really good at that stuff. So, you got to do something. You got to do something physical and you got to do something as part of a team. That's, that's important. I think the evidence would bear that out. Um, mm-hmm. I am intentionally opting out of any sort of pre-professional training until my kid is a junior or senior in high school. Then we will start having hard conversations about what's next. Until then, mm-hmm. it is play first. And when they ask, why can't I be on this? And why can't I do that? 
My job is to keep you safe. And I don't want you around the mess. The toxic, nonsensical, idiotic parents. I'm not going to use that language, by the way. That was between me and you. <laughs> that was between me and you. <laughs> no, um, no. Check, check, check. You, you, you nailed it. <laughs> but but, I, but I, think, I think telling my eight-year-old, you didn't make the team. They had a bunch of different criteria that wasn't just about who's the better baseball player. Well, what do you mean? They had all kinds of things about uniforms and other things. And I'm opting for you to not play in that league. Mm-hmm. We're going to go play baseball here. Or yeah. this summer, we're taking the summer off. Yeah. And that's ultimately, you know, sorry for the long rambling, you know, thing. No, it's good. You're absolutely right. It, it is. It's like, yeah, we're not going to do that. We're going to a different one because yeah. that, I, I would, you know, you're not going to be influencing my child, the, the most precious gift. Um, but it, you're absolutely right. It's absolutely bananas to see how, even for me, like how these kids' identity is being tied to their performance, whether it's in but, school or But they're or getting that from us. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, yeah, and it, I don't want just, my kid. You don't want, you don't want my eight-year-old to do? Have fun. Yeah. I want him yeah. to learn, hey, if, if you strike out, it costs your team. I think that's a good lesson. I don't have any problem with that. I think it's great. I want him to know, hey, if you stay up till 2 a.m. at a sleepover party and have nothing but donuts and M&Ms and you strike out four times the next day, I want, I want him to begin to, to connect right? Your behavior yesterday impacted your whole team today. That's a good lesson. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I want him to have fun. Yeah. I want my kid to play. He's got the rest of his life to have the world tell him that he sucks at everything and he's not good enough. <laughs> and it, 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 yeah. it reminds me of this. Um, and I may have mentioned this on the show. There, back in the early UFC days, in the, in the, um, the Valley Tudo days, way back in the day, my favorite fighters in the world came out of a gym out of Brazil. And it was Vandele Silva and Shogun Hua and all these guys. They were incredible. But here's how they trained. They just got in fist fights every day. And they knocked each other unconscious. That was how they trained. And now you fast forward 30 years later. And they did that because if you can get through our practices, like a fight with another professional will be nothing. It will be nothing. Right. Until yeah. they started showing up several years later with... Um, brain injuries and repeated knee and elbow and hand injuries and hip injuries. And what they've now realized is they, they save heavy, hard sparring for rare times and everybody's padded up to the max because we're only going to go full tilt when we're getting paid for it in a ring. Mm -hmm. And so I tell you to say, I hear the argument, my kid needs to toughen up and he needs to learn. The world will be glad to beat your kid up. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. You doing that when he's 8, 9, 10, 11, 14 is nonsense. Let your kid run around in the street with a stick and a ball and some mud. Let your kid go to the pool. Let your kid... And save the gas money, by the way. Gas is expensive right now. I, I would love, dude, I would love to see just a parents rise up across the country. It would take one Facebook post. All travel sports are canceled this summer. We're not doing it. We're not going to pay $900 to prop up um, a bunch of adult egos. We're not. And by the way, I've got no trouble with with, uh, travel ball. Little League World Series is great. I think this stuff's good. And when the coaches are great, the coaches are phenomenal. And we've had some remarkable coaches. Remarkable. Coach David, amazing guy. Coach Charlie, Coach... Those guys are so great. And they've got some other ones that just can't get it. Can't parents and whatever, man. All I'd say, let your kids play. Keep them safe, psychologically, emotionally, spiritually, physically, best you can. You gotta let them hurt. You gotta let them fall down. Let's don't me. I don't mean I don't mean bubble wrap them, and don't let them have any scars. That's not that's not right. They gotta take their lumps, <laughs> but they can't prop up our fragile adult egos. Leslie, your kid's lucky to have you. Get him out of that nonsense and let him go play. He's only eight. 